Today we are talking about lightning. Lightning is one of those things that we have seen a lot, but a lot of us don't know a whole lot about them. There are over 100 lightning strikes every second that hit the ground in the worldwide, and over 25 million lightning strikes a year just in the United States alone. So what is lightning? Well, lightning is an electrostatic discharge between electrically charged regions in a cloud or between those electrically charged regions in the cloud and the ground. The bolt that we see is actually plasma. Okay, so this bolt is a, is a little column of plasma that usually works its way up from the ground to the cloud. So now, we said it was this electrostatic discharge between the cloud or the cloud and the ground. So what creates these different charges? So that's what we're going to look at next. We're going to go through the formation of a lightning bolt. And the key is, it all starts with the cloud, normally a, cu a cumulonimbus cloud, getting electrically charged. So you see positives in the top and negatives in the bottom. And this little video clip will show you why or how the cloud gets charged. Any storm that has lightning can be deadly. So the big question is, how does lightning form? Well, it's all about getting the charges, which are all around us, to separate. And here in a thunderstorm cloud, we gotta focus in about halfway up. About halfway up a cloud, there's a magic range of temperatures between about 14 degrees and four below zero, where several types of precipitation can exist. The snowflakes generally have a slightly positive charge, while hail in this area would have a slightly negative charge. Now also in this thunderstorm cloud is what's known as an updraft, where wind moves up and away from the ground and up through the cloud, and it picks up those lighter snowflakes. So you have the snowflakes going to the top of the cloud with a slightly positive charge, and hail either staying put or slightly sinking with a negative charge, and eventually, that area of hail can get big enough that it even induces the opposite charge here on the ground. So you start to see positive charges collecting, especially on those tall, pointy objects. When those charges get separate enough and big enough, then all of a sudden, you can get lightning to form right on through. We'd like to see your... Okay, so you, that showed you why these clouds get positively charged at the top and negative at the bottom. Again, the strong updraft lifts up those snowflakes, the lighter pieces, that have positive charge to the top. The hailstones, the heavier pieces are down at the bottom, making a negative charge. That induces a positive charge in the ground. Opposites attract. So negative in the bottom of the crowd, cloud is going to make the ground positive. Eventually, that charge difference is going to get great enough that these the negative charges start to work their way down towards the positive ground. That little ionized channel there is called a stepped leader. Okay, so in your picture, you're going to label that a stepped leader. And then the charge is negative. So you see the charge is negative of the stepped leader working down towards the positively charged ground. When that stepped leader gets really close to the ground, then the ground will often send up what's called a positive streamer. So you see in the second picture on your note sheet, that positive streamer coming up from the tree or from the ground, and it's positively charged. Obviously, positive streamer would be positively charged. When they connect, they form the actual lightning bolt, so your last picture. So the lightning bolt, you see, is positively charged. The positives are draining kind of from the ground, going up into the cloud to neutralize it. So what direction does lightning go? Well, most lightning actually goes up. That is lightning that hits the ground. Now, kind of, you know, why you might have the question, well, why don't the charges just discharge in the cloud or from cloud to cloud? That's true. Most lightning is actually in the cloud lightning, sheet lightning. Only 25% of lightning strikes actually hit the ground. Most are in the clouds themselves. But of those 25% that kind of touch the ground, most of them go up. Only about 5% of them are what are called bolts, uh, bolts out of the blue, which go from the top of the cloud, the positive region, directly all the way to the ground. But most charges, most lightning actually goes up. 
So we see kind of in this animation, we see again the step leader working its way down, it gets down farther, the positively charged go up. When it connects, the positives go up. So the actual lightning bolt usually goes up. And I like this picture. You can see that this happened to be a positive streamer right here that never connected. So just because there's a positive streamer doesn't mean there's going to be a lightning bolt. So if you were kind of unlucky enough to have a positive streamer coming out of your head towards a step leader that's coming down from a cloud, there's not a guarantee that you're going to be struck by lightning. So if your hair starts standing on end or your friend's hair stand, starts standing up, there's no guarantee they're going to be struck. There's a good chance of it, though, so it'd certainly get away from them um, for that. So here's some video in slow motion showing the lightning moving up. So this might be misleading, so it looks like the lightning bolt's going down in this case. This is just amplified light-wise. That's actually the stepped leader going down. So normally we don't see this visually with our eyes. It's going down fairly quickly, but once one of those reaches, then you see the actual lightning bolt goes up. So that's the bright part that we see. So our eyes are a little bit tricked. That stepped leader that we saw going down kind of faintly flickers, and our eyes see that just a little bit before the main bolt that we really see goes up. So our mind just tricks us into thinking that lightning bolts go down, when really lightning bolts usually go up. If I watch this next video, this one. Place, and then the leader is shot up from the tower tip and goes upward. So you see again, the lightning is going up. Over the last few years, have astounded the world of lightning science. Okay, so that's enough watching of those, but you can certainly find out a lot more videos um, with that super duper slow motion to show that most lightning bolts do go up for the ones that do connect to the ground. So kind of moving on, um, how does lightning cause thunder? Well, lightning, as we know, is really, really, really hot. 45,000 to 50,000 degrees Fahrenheit. That's hot. What is that hot plasma going to do to the air next to the lightning bolt? What's well, going to heat it up? And that hot air is going to expand. Let me get rid of these. Now the same flash. Okay. Right here. Okay, so we're back to here. So that lightning bolt heats up the air. Hot air expands really quickly. If that hot air expands faster than the speed of sound, it will cause thunder. So thunder is just a shock wave. Okay, it's, it's the air expanding faster than the speed of sound. Um, so you see that every five seconds, so if you're counting the time between when you hear the thunder and when you see the lightning, so you'll see the lightning, count your seconds, every five seconds is one mile. So for example, if you see a lightning bolt and then 10 seconds later you hear the thunder, that means the lightning bolt struck two miles away. Okay, does that make sense? So every five seconds is one mile. So if there were 15 seconds between when you saw the lightning bolt and when you heard the thunder, it was three miles away. Now we'll talk a little bit more later, but is there a safe distance that you could be away? So for example, if you see the lightning and then you don't hear the thunder until 30 seconds later or 40 seconds later, is that far enough that you're safe and you might not get struck? The answer basically is no. If you can see the lightning, you can get struck by it. Okay, no matter kind of how far away it is. There have been cases where lightning has actually traveled 25 or 26 miles from the cloud to strike a location, strike a person, strike something else. So you might be able to see that cumulonimbus cloud way, way, way on the distance. And it stood, could still come and strike you. So kind of thing, if you see lightning or if you hear thunder, you need to take precautions because you could certainly get struck. Um, this page, I just wanted to show you, these are called fulgurites. This is when a lightning bolt hits sand. 
and again lightning is really hot almost 50,000 degrees so when it hits the sand it's going to melt the sand into glass which is called a fulgurite. I'll show you one in class. I have a little a little piece of it. But what I wanted to show you about it was how wide a lightning bolt is. When we see a lightning bolt, it seems like it's really wide. It's just so bright. Lightning bolts are only about an inch wide. It, they're so bright that they seem a lot wider. So I'll show you um, one of those in class. Um, my little link here, we're not going to watch this now, but we'll watch it in class. Um, it shows soccer players getting struck by lightning. Um, which strikes the field and it goes through and we'll see you know kind of how that works um, but again when you see that lightning bolt strike you'll see it's just a very small um, small thing it's only an inch wide so what happens if you do get struck and we're going to talk about ways to get struck um, it's just coming up in the next slide but you see that sometimes people get this kind of scar. It's not a permanent scar, but get, they get this dendritic pattern. Um, it's called a Lichtenberg figure um, on them. Basically, your nerves are very good conductors, um, but your skin is not as, not as good of a conductor. So as it's going through, it's, remember that lightning is trying to find a way to the ground. It wants to get that positive charge, wants to get to the negative charge. So it's just trying to find the easiest path to discharge that electrical energy. And if you happen to be the best way, um, it will. So you think of how can now that energy, how can all that heat not kill somebody? Um, less than 5% of people that get struck by lightning die. Most of that energy goes around them. Because it's going so fast, most of the energy isn't traveling through a person. It's actually going around them. Um, when it does travel through, that is what causes damage. Like I said, your nervous system um, is a very good condu conductor. So that can conduct it through and hurt parts of your brain and then also your heart. Um, so here's a little bit kind of more on life lightning safety since that's the kind of the main thing we need to be talking about. So where most lightning deaths occur, you see it's mostly outside. See, 99% of fatal lightning incidents are outdoors. You're in open fields, ballparks, golf courses, one of the biggest ones. Um, don't hide under a tree. Some people think to hide under a tree, or it just starts raining and thundering and lightning, so you want to get out of the rain, so you go under a tree. A tree is a very, very bad place to be. Um, basically, lightning likes to strike kind of the tallest thing. And if you're standing under a tree that happens to be one of the tallest things, there's a good chance that you can get struck too, and you'll see in the next coming slides with that. Um, one of those myths that you might have heard is that you don't want to be in a car because it's metal. Um, cars are very safe places to be during a lightning storm. Because the car is metal, metal is a great conductor. So the electricity will be conducted through the car instead of you. So if you're sitting in the car, that electricity is going to be going around you. You know, Try not to touch the metal parts of the car. Um, I've also heard the myth that it's the rubber tires that protect you in a car. The rubber tires don't do anything is that the metal of the car is just a much better conductor than you are, so it's going to go through that metal car and not you. Um, so how lightning strikes people, I said, you know, again, about don't, don't be standing near a tree or under a tree, and here you see a picture of a tree that exploded, obviously not safe, um, but here is kind of the main ways that lightning strikes people. Um, there's a direct strike, so you're kind of the tallest thing, you're out in a field, and the lightning just strikes you because you have that positive streamer coming out of you. Okay. A side flash. So again, you might be hide, thinking, oh, I'm going to hide under the tree. I'm going to get out of the rain. It might start going down the tree. Trees aren't great conductors. So there's a chance that it could jump into you. Okay, it says victims are usually within a foot or two of the trunk. Um, it could be a ground current. Again, you don't want to get too close to that tree. It might strike the tree and go into the ground and then up through you. So you don't want to be hiding under a tree. This one is going to be pretty rare, okay, so if it st happens to strike like a metal fence and you're touching the metal fence, it could go and get you, okay, pretty rare. Um, also, the streamer one is also very rare, that let's say that you had a positive streamer coming out of you, and so the tree, the lightning strike actually struck the tree, there could be enough energy actually in the discharge to get you as well. Again, these last ones are pretty rare. But kind of the message is, you know, certainly, if there's a lightning storm, get inside. You don't want to be outside. You don't want to be out in the open. You don't want to be um, under a tree. Get inside. Let's go back to here. Um, so if you have to be outside, 
here's kind of the pose to take. You're going to crouch down, put your ankles together. So hopefully that energy that you saw in that last one, you can see it'll go in one foot, kind of through your ankles, and out the other. Um, this sign, again, get indoors, get indoors. That's going to be the main thing. It says wait 30 minutes. Again, that lightning storm, it could be 25 or 26 miles away, and it could still strike you. Lightning can go a long, long distance before it strikes. Um, inside, um, don't be talking on the phone, uh, not taking a shower. Again, you know, taking a shower may be a little bit more obvious that um, the lightning is going to take, again, the easiest path. Metal pipes are an easy path. If you're taking a shower, it could go kind of to your shower head and then need a place to jump, and you may happen to be there, jump through. Um, also, it can jump through, like the telephones or any other things that are, pl that are plugged into the outlet because electricity, uh, again, wires are very good conductors. That's why they're used for conducting electricity. Um, other things with lightning safety, um, you might have seen lightning rods on buildings. We'll take you on a little tour of campus, and we'll show you some of the lightning rods and protection around, around school here. Um, but lightning rods are designed, the tip of them, there's different designs for the tips, but they're designed to send those positive streamers up. Hopefully they're going to do a better job of po sending the positive streamers up than your house. So if the lightning will strike it, you see there's, a, there's an exposed wire going down the building, discharged to um, a pin, a clamp they're calling it, into the ground. So again, the idea is you're trying to get that positive charge up and into the cloud without going through the building, through a person, or anything like that. You want it to be discharged um, as easily as possible. So again, kind of safety-wise, that's kind of what we always harp on, safety. If there's thunder and lightning, get inside. If you see lightning, if you see a storm, there is no kind of safe distance. They'll go 25 miles or so, so get indoors. If you have to be outdoors, don't hide under a tree. You're going to crouch down. You're going to get your ankles together. Uh, buildings, you're going to have lightning rods and buildings. Stay away from um, taking a shower. Stay away from all the, the outlets there. That's pretty much it for lightning.